SpaceX's Inspiration4 mission is now flying higher than the International Space Station. The first all-civilian crew to reach orbit woke up to this remarkable view this morning. Well, that's the shuttle taking off, and here is what they're now seeing. People across the country got to watch, got to watch that launch last night. Our Gio Benitez, though, got to be there in person. Overnight, SpaceX making history, launching four private citizens into orbit without a professional astronaut on board. It is headed into orbit with the crew. Only those four are waking up this morning to this view from the Dragon's Cupola, more of Earth than any civilian has seen before. Crowds of people gathered in the distance to watch this historic launch. You can see this incredible moment when the Crew Dragon capsule detaches from the Falcon 9 rocket. The massive booster descends back down to Earth. And as the capsule detaches from the rocket's second stage, cheers down on Earth for the mission known as Inspiration 4. As the Dragon enters space, the crew members start experiencing zero gravity. Inside the capsule, the crew releasing a toy inspired by the specially trained dogs at St. Jude Children's Hospital. That is apropos. This morning, they are soaring 363 miles away from Earth, orbiting the planet at 17,500 miles per hour for three days, going farther than any civilian has before, 100 miles past the International Space Station. 38-year-old billionaire Jared Isaacman bought all four seats on board and then gave three of them away as a fundraiser for St. Jude. There they are, our first all-civilian crew. One of those crew members, 29-year-old Haley Arsenault, a physician's assistant at St. Jude, once a patient there. Now she is the youngest American ever to go to space and the first pediatric cancer survivor to go to. I'm just a regular person going to space. And, you know, not everyone has had childhood cancer, but everyone has had to overcome something. The trip not without risk. This is the first time the Crew Dragon has ever gone this far into space. A computer does the flying, and if there are any issues, there is no way to get to the International Space Station. But they can return to Earth. And remember, Elon Musk wants humans to get to Mars and be able to live there. So there is no question this is just the beginning of civilians going farther and farther into space, Diane. Cool stuff. Gio Benitez at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Thanks, Gio. And let's bring in former NASA astronaut and ABC News contributor Katie Coleman and astrophysicist Hakeem Alushayi for more on this. Thank you both for joining us today. Katie, I want to start with you. As someone who's been to space, how difficult is it to prep for people with no experience for a trip like this? Well, apparently not as hard as we thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they've, they've done so much work in a short amount of time. And I would say under idealized circumstances in that, you know, the mission was very well planned. They had the resources and also, um, Jared Isaacman and, and his uh, group at, at Inspiration4, I think really thought about because he has been in situations where being a team member and really understanding the rest of your team is so important. He's been there. He knew a lot about what they needed to do. And so did SpaceX and they did those things things. And I think that crew was very ready for the mission that they were preparing for. Now, Hakeem, what went through your mind last night watching this launch, knowing all the science that goes into it? Well, I'm incredibly impressed by the preparation. So uh, an astronaut like Katie would normally train for about two years. They only had five months of training, and that's assisted by the fact that the Crew Dragon is an autonomous vehicle. It doesn't look anything like the uh, previous century's space capsules, right? There's no buttons. And so, you know, if you've ever wrote, ridden in military vehicles that are created by the government, uh, or at least paid for by the government, there's not waste involved, right? But if you look at this, um, they took into account style, right? There's nothing that looks like this thing that's been there before. They have touch screens, but they also have manual controls, and even their uniforms are beautiful, right? So what we have here is a new way of accessing space, and it's something that even civilians can do with little training. 
Katie, what's it like once you're up there, waking up to this kind of a view? Wait, paint a picture for us of what they're experiencing right now, but also the difference between this and the missions that you went on as an astronaut. Well, I might start with the last part first, where you know, this capsule, the Dragon capsule, was originally created or designed and actually paid for as well, that design for, um, for NASA, because we needed a way to get people up and down to space. And we knew how to do get people up and down there, but um, with this, you know, with using NASA. But then we turned to our commercial partners who we knew could do it more quickly, more flexibly, using all the things that NASA had learned. And so I think it really meant a lot to have NASA test pilots astronauts on the first uh, couple missions here, understanding, you know, pulling out what does it do? What does it not do? Because all of us, you know, SpaceX, NASA, Boeing, all the aerospace companies, we are all in the, in the mission of getting people to space. And to think about them, you know, up in space right now, I mean, this crew was very, very ready. I say as the, for the mission that they were preparing for, which doesn't involve spacewalking or docking. And at the same time, the magic is the same. The fact that you are a human and that they have four different, you know, human up in space, floating and flying and looking at our Earth. I mean, I, I am envious, um, but at the same time, I am so happy for them. And I also just think that they they bring you know they they bring a part of each of us up with them, and they've found a way to tell their story. The government isn't all that good at. And Hakeem, we've recently seen, we've seen a rover land on Mars. We've seen Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson go to space, now four civilians orbiting the Earth for three days. What broader impact does all of this have on the country and on the world? Yeah, so just illustrating these things, you know, once you do it the first time, then that opens the door, right? So one, you know, certain things seemed impossible until they were done, like running a mile in four minutes. Now everyone runs a mile in four minutes who's a professional runner, right, who does that type of running. Well, what we're illustrating here, what these private enterprises are illustrating is that making access to space almost routine, like we have now traveling from country to country in airplanes, is something that may actually be possible. We may actually be doing uh, civilian suborbital flights and civilian orbital flights, and who knows, perhaps going to the moon and Mars, because that is our aspiration. Our science fiction shows tell us what humans want to do, right? We want to be Star Trek. We want to fly through the galaxy. Um, now, that is way out there. There's a lot of problems associated with that, but access to our solar system, access to low Earth orbit, that is now attainable. All right. And Katie, where does this go from here? What's next for the future of space exploration? Well, I'd like to say the sky is the limit, but it is not. I'm glad that Hakeem brought up science fiction in that it, when people get to see themselves in these great things that are being done, that is the most important thing really for our future here on Earth, solving our challenges. And so to have people that look like a whole bunch of us on this flight is so important, I think, to the whole planet. It's important to me. It's important to Hakeem. You know, statistics like Cyan Proctor is the fourth woman, black woman, to be an astronaut. I mean, I'm just glad that she will not be the last, as a, as a friend of mine, Victor Glover, likes to say. So this mission really brings all of us into the future. All right, Katie Coleman, Hakeem Alushai, thank you both. Always great to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.